can you believe there is actually a book for sale on Amazon called Why Women Deserve Less? Really. This book is written by Myron Gaines, professional douchebag, or as he likes to describe himself, the host of the Fresh and Fit podcast, a number one best-selling author, and real estate investor. Now, I don't know if you've seen that podcast, but if you have, it's basically just a bunch of insecure, angry men trying to shout over a bunch of women, shout them down, thinking that being loud makes them right. It doesn't. It makes you stupid, but louder. Luckily, when it comes to something like a book, Myron can't shout at me, although he does try. His use of random capital letters throughout the book gets very old very quickly. But the great thing about a book is when it gets ridiculous, you can just shut it and throw it straight off the balcony, which funnily enough is what a lot of people wish they could do with Myron himself. According to his Amazon author page, Myron's other book recommendations include The Book of Numbers, Analyzing Return on Investment on the Pursuit of Women, and Rollo Tomasi, the misogynist, not the actually good band, Rollo Tomasi's The Rational Male, which is another joke of a book I plan to review on this channel at some point. It's really bad. I would argue that when it comes to why women deserve less, Myron put more effort into the product description than the actual book itself, which is an absolute joke. I'm not exaggerating. We're gonna have a giggle at Myron's delusions, we're gonna correct some of his blatant misinformation, and we're gonna pity this sad, sad little boy. Just as a warning, I am probably snarkier than normal in this video, but after all the crap I've read and watched and commented on over the years, I am so tired of these men. I have lost all patience with them. I don't have any ounce of compassion left for them because they never learn, they never get better. They just stay being horrible, ridiculous, ill-informed people in their ignorant little bubbles, thinking they're better than everyone else. And honestly, I just pity them at this point. So yeah, this video is gonna be a little bit snarkier than normal. If you'd like a more logic and statistics-based approach, then I recommend you go and just generally more level-headed. I'd recommend you go and check out my new video series that I am releasing slowly over the next few weeks. I just put out the first one and it's basically about why we still need feminism. So in the first video, I looked at why intersectional feminism is important, what laws mean around the world for women and why and how women still face oppression in different countries. I looked at things like child marriage and female genital mutilation and it's quite serious, but it's much more, you know, calm than this video in which we're just gonna be mocking a little man-child. But researching those videos has been so heavy and so time-consuming and so just mentally exhausting that honestly, I am just ready for having a bit of a laugh and a bit of a giggle. And you know, Myron's a great person to do that with because he's so ridiculous. So chapter one is titled, What You're Up Against, ellipses. And instead of bothering to actually write anything himself, he literally just copies a couple of pages from a Rouge V book, and that's it. End of chapter. <laughs> it's an absolute joke, but it really epitomizes what all these men are about, whether it's red pill, pickup artists, or as I like to call them, professional misogynists. None of them have had an original thought in their lives. None of them have any like intellectual capacity to actually analyze things like statistics or facts or research papers, or just anything they see in day-to-day -day life and come up with their own conclusions. They all just sit around parroting each other and complaining about what victims they are and how the only solution to not having any personality of their own is to treat everyone else around them in life so they feel like a big man. It's pathetic. Basically, the summary of this first chapter is just women are spoilt small children who can get sex whenever they want, concerning, and how it's awful that women now have the ability to choose for themselves who they want to date, when and why. Yeah, so awful. How dare we be treated as humans. Chapter two is incredibly bizarre. It just starts with a bunch of fictional stories of women rejecting various men. And the point is to just be like, uh, women are so terrible and evil and they treat us so badly. And that's why I have to make a fictional story to prove my point. Bad women, bad. And yeah, the stuff these fictional women do in these fictional stories is bad. For example, a 15 year old kid asks out his crush and for this act of bravery, Tom was rewarded with his crush, not only laughing at him in person, but blasting the event all over social media. She spread the rejection over Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Clubhouse. I don't even know what that one is, but here we are. Instead of rewarding his courage with a date, or a simple, thank you, but I'm not interested. She used it as an opportunity to promote herself at his expense. She used his 
tortured experience to gain popularity and clout amongst her friends. Yeah, because Myron would never do that on his podcast, would he? And for the rest of his freshman year, Tom was forced to endure this embarrassment in person and online. All snarkiness aside, yeah, this is awful, that's a horrible thing to do, but this is just a bad thing that bad people do, not a thing that all women do to prove that all women are awful. All the fictional stories in this chapter, from like, you know, humiliation to ghosting to whatever, are the exact same things I've had done to me by men. This is just a bad people thing, not a gender thing. Like, when I was a 15 year old kid in school, I was like the weird kid that boys would dare each other to ask out for a joke so they could humiliate me and laugh in my face because I was the weird, ugly kid. Can you imagine if I, as a like, almost 30 year old woman, sat here and went, well, when I was 15, these bullies were mean to me in school, and now therefore all men are awful, and I'm gonna write a book about them calling all men whores, and why they're all horrible people, and they don't deserve a right to vote, Men basically aren't even human because of what these few children did to me when I was also a child. Boo men. Do you see how pathetic it is? Point is, there are awful people on all sides, and while I don't want to victim blame, maybe for people like Myron, if the only women around you are shallow and cruel women who keep repeatedly doing this to you, maybe you need to take a look at yourself and ask, why are these the only women I know? Why am I surrounding myself with these kinds of people? Why am I allowing only this kind of person into my life? Am I doing something myself to attract only this kind of person? I don't know if this sounds harsh or not, but this is something I had to ask myself and come to terms with myself. Because after a string of really awful dating experiences with men who abused me, lied to me, cheated on me, physically harmed me, treated me just plain badly, I sat back and I thought, I'm the common denominator what am I doing here? And I had to go away and do some major work with my therapist on building up my own self-esteem until I finally felt worthy of attracting good people into my life. I had to realise that I deserved better. I needed to stop compromising and just accepting all this poor behaviour because I wanted someone and start realising, no, I don't need people in my life like that. It is okay to turn them away and say, get out, get away. And because I changed my mindset and built up my own self-esteem and realised that I deserve better. Now I'm surrounded by some of the most amazing, kind, wonderful people. I have the most perfect partner who is so, so lovely, so caring, so beautiful, and I'm very, very lucky. And I don't think I would have been able to accept him into my life without doing all this personal work first and finally realising that I don't, that I shouldn't be compromising and welcoming these bad people into my life. In summary, maybe Myron just needs some therapy to get over his myriad of issues, but no, instead someone let him publish a book. Myron's conclusion to these fictional stories is basically, this is what it's like for all men because women are just so bad and terrible, but he says it in such a needlessly verbose way, yet at the same time, incredibly vague. And that's the writing style of this entire book. There are so many words not saying much at all. For example, modern intersexual dynamics have brought a new normal in how men and women treat each other. Though recent and very abrupt, if you don't figure out now how men and women have fundamentally changed, you face the same risk, if not outright guarantee you'll fail like the three men mentioned above. Adapting to a modern female nature is easier said than done, because while this change is very recent, you still have 200,000 years of biology, evolution, and instincts, hardwired genetics, and traditions screaming at you to do what Tom, Dick, and Harry did. <laughs> There's a lot of words to say, not much at all, without any real evidence to back it up. Now I put this jumper back on, it's red hot in here again, sorry. Oh, the weather's so weird at the minute. It's hot one minute, freezing cold the next, raining one minute, sunny the next. I don't even know where I am. Myron goes on to claim, men are taught to take women at their word, be nice, and always be a gentleman. Men are taught to do the right thing, while women are taught to do the right thing for you. And once again, where is your evidence? And two, the irony. I don't think this is true at all. Women are the ones who've been historically told to sit down, shut up, and look pretty. Hey, I am gonna agree with Yo, you. Stop interrupting me when I'm talking, man. You don't gotta talk to me like that, though. Get the off the show, man. Just get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Get I don't here. know where what you what you think this is or where you're at or whatever. Not because you can curse at me, but I can't tell you that you're a because dick. Because I've told you a million times to stop interrupting. Tell I can only tell you so many times. You interrupt everybody. I am the fucking host. It's my show. Get the fuck off the platform. Now get yeah, out of here. There. Yeah. 
I don't give a fuck what you are. Get the fuck off the show. I love you. You're trying to create a scene, being an attention whore. It, it makes you look stupid. While men only ever had to look after number one. Men were the ones who inherited everything, who could get the jobs, who could go out there and do their own thing. Women were essentially property of men who just had to sh sit down, shut up, and take it. It seems to me like maybe there's starting to be a little bit of a shift now where some men understand that they aren't the centre of the universe anymore and they can actually treat women as equals. Shocking, I know. And that some women have now finally found the strength for us to say, I am not gonna live for a man, I intend to look after myself. And I think that's great. The problem is guys like Myron see this as a threat and start throwing their toys out of the pram even when there's like that little bit of pushback, you know? Essentially women are just asking to be treated as equals and are now able to treat themselves the way men have treated themselves for thousands of years. And Myron sees this new found path towards equality as somehow oppressing him? No. All this does is show that men like Myron are incredibly insecure and it's a little sad, isn't it? I'm also concerned that this line has apparently 145 highlights on Kindle. Who are these 145 men and are they okay? He then goes on to say that this book, of which we are already 10% of the way through despite there being no real content yet, is a simple, brief, concise, and practical manual that summarises the wisdom concerning career, finances, education, philosophy, and female nature into an action plan you can implement now! Yay. Just what we all need and wanted. He ends by ironically saying, intelligent men learn from their mistakes, but wise men learn from other people's mistakes, which is funny because Myron is neither intelligent nor wise. But hopefully we can learn from Myron's mistakes and learn how not to be an absolute douchebag of a human. A lot of his books centers around this idea of there being an old contract and a new contract between men and women, and how we have to deal with this new contract, but the old one was so much better, you know? Apparently the old contract was men provide resources and protection, women provide sex, and if wanted, children. Funnily enough, I remember it being a little bit different, more like women weren't allowed anything of their own and were so made to be reliant on men who treated them as nothing more than objects for their own benefit. But apparently these days there is a new contract, which is apparently women saying, I don't need a man, men are trash, down with the patriarchy, believe all women. And again, funny, because this is not how I remember it. I always thought it's more along the lines of let's treat each other with respect and be equal and understand that people can make their own choices in life. Oh yeah, and let's all fight against oppressive power structures together, yeah? Isn't it funny how two people can see the same thing and interpret it so differently? Especially when one of those people feels incredibly threatened by their loss of absolute power and control and ability to demonize others. Funny that. He goes on to say, first, it is human nature. The old contract this is, he's, he's talking about the old contract. No matter how much women hate the past or feminists detest tradition, there's no denying that men and women evolved over thousands of years to interact with each other in a certain way. These biological realities are reflected in the old contract and no matter how much women would wish otherwise, they are inescapable. Indeed, times have changed. Indeed, feminism has burned the old contract. I know we had an editor on this, but still, the writing is pretty terrible, right? It's just like faux intellectual pretentiousness, you know? But can we please take a moment to just consider the irony of men and their thoughts like this? They're like, evolution is real! Gender roles evolve into what I like them to be, so that's the natural way! But now they're somewhere that I like them, they're not allowed to evolve anymore. Any more evolution is wrong and unnatural and we don't count that. Evolution is only true up to the point where it benefits me and then it has to stop, okay? He doesn't consider that maybe there was an evolution for a while and maybe the evolution is continuing and changing into something different. Maybe? He then says, some people fully accept the new contract. Examples include feminists with purple hair. There's me, that's me, I'm famous mum, look at me, I'm in a book. I don't know how purple my hair looks on camera, it's just recently dyed and it's a bit dark, but trust me, it's purple. No, a joke. Um, I'm surprisingly not actually a man-hater. I know, wild. But yeah, the rest of it, look what he said, that's me. A purple-haired feminist who believes sexual assault victims and isn't reliant on a man. Who'd have thought a big man like Myron would be so scared of a silly little woman like me, eh? Oh, Myron, you. He then goes on to talk about how it's so hard these days to know your role as a man and a woman. And he gives this pathetic example. For example, it was perfectly all right to buy a girl flowers in the past, and she would naturally be inclined to enjoy them. But if not done under the precisely right circumstances and conditions today, such a move would likely label you creepy, desperate, or even a borderline stalker. Mate, 
if you're being labelled as a creepy, desperate stalker, then the problem is with you, not with the people you're making uncomfortable, all right? Here's the thing, it's really not that complicated. I am a person who has been given flowers and given flowers to others in the past, and not once has any one of those interactions been called creepy, desperate, or a stalker. Know why? Consent. All it takes is the tiniest shred of self-awareness and to think about other people for a split second. It's not that difficult. It's not that deep. It's not that hard. I'm autistic and I can figure it out. I think you're gonna be fine, mate. There never has been and never will be a problem with just giving a thoughtful gift to someone you care about just because you wanna make them feel good. None at all. Be that flowers or whatever. The problem stems from the fact that in the past, men have often used gifts like this as a way to manipulate women into giving them something that they didn't necessarily want to give. It was all about playing with power and making women feel reliant on men and like they owed them something. Gifts for some men stopped being about showing that you care and started being a transactional means of control. I gave you flowers, therefore you owe me a date. I took you on a date, therefore you owe me sex. It puts women in this position where they feel like they owe you something and because of that they can't really properly consent to stuff. It messes everything up, it's difficult. That's the problem. If you give a random woman who you have no prior relationship with a gift, because of that history, she's gonna be thinking, crap, what does he want from me? What does he expect in return from this? And that's probably when you're likely to be labeled a creep or a stalker or desperate. Let's look at a non-dating example that might make this a little bit more clear. An example of what's okay, right? Often when I go down to London to visit my friends, I will stay with my friend Daisy. Now, because we have this pre-existing friendship, uh, we've known each other, what, like six years or something now? She's one of my best friends because I ask her if it's okay to stay down there, because we arrange it all in advance, because I know what Daisy likes and what she doesn't like and all this sort of thing. Um, I often take her down as a thank you, a fancy bottle of wine as a gift, you know? At these times, I turn up to Daisy's house, I knock on the door, I say, hey, I've got a bottle of wine and I stay the night. Now, I'm not expecting anything else back in return for that bottle of wine. We already have a pre-existing friendship. We made the arrangements for me to stay over. The gift is a, this is a thank you to make you feel good and show my appreciation. That's what the gift means. And that's okay. Now, if I turned up at a random person's house in London with a bottle of wine and said, hi, I'm here to stay, here's some wine, that would be creepy. Can you see the difference? This is what it's like when you give unsolicited flowers to a random woman that you've maybe had no prior interactions with or she's not shown any reciprocation in your interactions, you know? Do you know? If a stuffed monkey gets it, you can get it. It all just comes down to building relationships slowly, establishing and respecting boundaries, and not making relationships transactional. Despite the fact that Daisy is doing me a favor and I'm giving her a gift, it's not a transactional thing because it's just a part of a friendship. It's her saying, yes, stay with me because I wanna spend time with you, and me saying, I appreciate your kindness. Let me give you this gift of wine that we usually end up splitting together or she can split with her partner or whatever, you know? It's like a big appreciation and friendship thing. There's no transactions. Does that make sense? But Myron doesn't understand this. He wants to go back to the old contract. And in the next chapter, he says, people may not like this emotionless transactional view of men and women, but it doesn't make it any less accurate. The relationship between most men and women throughout all of history has been transactional. It has been prostitution. All men are Johns, all women are whores. Yeah, see, Myron, this is a you problem here. Maybe women keep laughing at you and standing you up and treating you badly and all those things you kept saying because you keep calling us whores. Yeah? This is a problem with you and your behavior, not the women. Healthy relationships are not transactional. People with basic human compassion and kindness and empathy do not think this way. This may have potentially been the case historically when men forced this oppression on women, but that doesn't make it okay. This just sounds like the same line of reasoning used by people who used to say, they want to be slaves. It's in their nature. They didn't, it wasn't, they don't. He then goes on to insult women by calling them stingy, prudish, and arrogant, and claims women have lofty, if not impossible, standards, which is an absolute joke, right? As a woman myself, surprising, I know. Let me give you an example of my own standards so we can use this as an example. Here's what I like in a man in a relationship. I want them to treat me as an equal, be kind, be fun to be around, have similar interests to me, hold similar values as me when it comes to the important things in life like family and living situations and goals and all that sort of thing, earn a similar amount of money to me so I'm not paying for everything all the time, there should be a mutual attraction between us, they've gotta be kind to my dog, 
don't cheat on me, don't lie to me, don't hurt me. Done. I don't think that's lofty, if not impossible. I think that's pretty reasonable, to be honest, and so do a lot of people. And you know what's crazy? I've met a man who exactly meets those standards. My partner, pretty wonderful. If you think something like a woman asking, please don't cheat on me, please don't hurt me, have similar values to me, is asking too much, it's impossible, then maybe you need to do some self-reflection and figure out what is wrong with you. Literally over half of this book is Myron sat there going, <laughs> women don't want me anymore because I don't want to treat them as human. Why won't they have sex with me? All I'm doing is dehumanizing them and it's not fair. He is such a little man child. God's sake, grow up, Myron, you're 33 years old, for God's sake. You're an adult, act like it. He then shows his absolute lack of any sort of education with this statement. God knows how this man got a degree. In short, everything good, meaningful, and beautiful in life came from the old contract between men and women. Every human advancement, including family, love, technology, history, the arts, or civilization, comes from men trading resources for sex. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mate, no. You could not be more wrong. You, no. There are countless examples I could use, but off the top of my head, Hypatia wasn't one of our greatest and earliest philosophers and teachers because she was being paid by a man for sex. Her being killed by misogynistic douchebags for stepping out of line as a woman wasn't good, meaningful, or beautiful, or any of those crappy words you want to throw out there. Sappho's stunning poetry definitely had nothing to do with sex with men. Trust me. Ada Lovelace wasn't a genius mathematician who revolutionized everything we know about computers because she was forced to give sex to a man. The women of Bletchley Park didn't essentially win us the war by being oppressed by men. Gertrude Ellion didn't create a crap ton of medicines, including two treatments for leukemia, because she was told by men she was nothing but a whore. In fact, I'd argue most human advancements and creations and amazing artistic feats and merits and all this sort of stuff actually come from people saying screw you to this outdated patriarchal way. Myron's lack of understanding of this shows me just how sheltered and ignorant and narrow-minded he is. Pick up a book for once, Myron. Read a little bit about the real world and step out of your little stupid misogynistic bubble where you're all like, huh, 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 women are whores, am I right, lads? You're all a pathetic little echo chamber and it's not cool. We all just, you know, all of us on the outside looking in, we just pity you. You have a lot of followers online, sure, but how many of them are just sat around laughing at you? Because I can tell you now, it's a lot. Then Myron throws out some lovely gendered insults. Nice. It's kind of funny because I can say with absolute certainty, any vagina in the world is tougher than Myron will ever be. He then says that a woman saying I don't need a man is anti-male propaganda. No, it's not about you. And he then calls Beyonce a hypocrite for releasing feminist songs but having a husband? Okay. I feel like he's completely misunderstanding the whole I don't need a man thing on purpose. Like, it's just about women acknowledging that we want to be able to live our own lives, make our own choices, not be treated like a piece of property, to make our own income, to manage our own resources. That's what I don't need a man means. Like me. I don't need a man. I don't need a partner but I want my partner and I love my partner because he's amazing. There's a huge difference between need and want. When women say now I don't need a man, what they mean is I don't want to be forced to be with a man just to survive. I don't want to be controlled by a man. I don't want to be oppressed by a man. I don't want to be reliant on a man. Me and my partner, for example, we have a pretty nice dynamic and it's still early in the relationship. It's still the first year but we both want the same things long term. We've both got a very nice like way of living now that we're very happy with and we'll probably continue for quite a while. We both have our own finances, our own homes. I earn more than him. We go 50-50 on all our dates, unless it's something special like his birthday where I treated him. But we don't need each other in that we're not reliant on each other in any of those ways. If we broke up tomorrow, we'd still both be absolutely fine and able to survive and carry on and get back to normal. And it's nice because it means that every moment we spend together and stay together is because we want to. And that's, to me, what a relationship should be about. It's not about being reliant on someone and having to stay with them or making someone reliant on you and you having power over them. It's about waking up every day and choosing to be with a person because you love them, you enjoy their company, you want to be with them, you want to spend time with them, you want to build something great with them. 
How is that a bad thing? What's funny though is that like at first when I read this I was like, oh he just doesn't understand what it means. But you know what, I actually think he does understand. He's just either choosing to misrepresent it or he's scared of it. He says, let's translate I don't need a man from womanese to English. I know. So apparently what women actually mean is, I don't need you anymore and consequently we need to rearrange how men and women interact with one another in society. I need you to recognise that I am no longer dependent on you and both our behaviours need to reflect that. Yeah. That's it. That's what we've been trying to say. How are you scared of that? How are you bothered by that? How are you so angry about that? It's fear. It's absolutely fear. Myron, and every man like him, is a scared little boy because he's realised he has nothing of actual value to offer a woman. So when they have a choice, of course they don't want to be anywhere near him. For nearly all their existence, women needed men, while men could carve their existence out in the real world through their actions. Women could not, making them wholly dependent on men. Consequently, women had to find a man and keep him happy. They had to dote on men, cook for men, have sex with men, even if they didn't want to, and take care of men. All this lest they cared to die. Can you believe he actually wants to go back to this? I... No words. Oh, and in a moment, he has the nerve to try and claim, Yeah, but I'm not a misogynist, Myron. One. Be honest. Anyway, he goes on. Although you may have never done anything to keep a woman, or have her somehow be dependent upon you, their entire bioevolutionary history is one where they have, in one way or another, been owned or kept by men. This is where the phrase liberated from men originated, this is why they parrot I don't need a man, and though it may blindside you because you never kept a harem of women corralled on some ranch, their statement of independence is very real and serious to them. And the fact he's complaining about this is both tragic and laughable. I'm just so sad I can't control women anymore. I just want to keep them. I want to oppress them. I want to control them and it's not fair that I'm not allowed to do that. How's my favourite little feminist been? Now say hi, baby. Say hi. Oh, yes. Who's my little feminist? Who's my little feminist? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I stoned you. I stoned you. I stoned you. Oh, my little independent lady. Do you want to do the rest of the video for me? Yeah. Go and read from my notes right there. Yeah. You're me. You're in charge. <laughs> Good girl. Love you. He then goes on to complain about stuff like women being allowed to vote, divorces being allowed, the industrial revolution. The, the last was actually really funny, right? He doesn't like the industrial revolution because he's like, if men can't be in control by being strong anymore, then what do we have? When people in power are mostly intelligent people, that means women get more power and then we men suffer. <laughs> he's literally complaining because women are more intelligent than men. That's what it is. Mate, just admit you're stupid and intimidated by our intelligence. It's fine, just, just say the words, we all know it anyway. <laughs> because it's funny, again, I've been working on this in my feminist series, but women and girls do consistently outperform men when it comes to education, schoolwork, intelligence tests. Next up, he comes so close to self-awareness, and yet so, so far. With no need for men, or so women think, men are allowed to choose the right man rather, be, rather than be forced or coerced into accepting the wrong one. This transformed the contract between men and women from dependency and prostitution to that of choice or volunteerism. And if you take a minute or two to think about it, what should have transpired was a dramatic improvement between the sexes. With no longer needing each other, both men and women could choose who they wanted to be with instead of who they needed to be with. But apparently this is really, really, really bad. By nearly every measure, the sexes have abandoned one another instead of blissfully coming together. Oh, isn't that right? And then he quotes some statistics, doesn't he? And he misunderstands them all, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Not really misunderstanding, just more like misrepresenting. Marriage is at an all-time low of 5.1 marriages per thousand people. Half the long-term average going back to 1900. 70 to 80% of divorces are initiated by women, jumping to 90% if the woman is college educated. Family formation is down from 3.6 births per woman in 1960 to 1.64 births per woman in 2020. The percentage of women who haven't had sex in the past year has increased by 50%, going from 12% of the population to 18%, while the percentage of men not having sex in the past has almost doubled, going from 15% of the population to 28%. 
male virginity has nearly tripled, going from 11% of the young male population to 27%. Oh no, how terrible, how sad. Boo. Aren't you just heartbroken, Kyra? Just to add to this though, some statistics that Myron didn't say. Did you know people are actually getting on average happier every year, not including the pandemic years because that screwed everyone over, and that single women with no kids are amongst the happiest demographic out there? we are doing great. You can't complain about things like the marriage rates being lower than they used to be though if you don't tell me why this is supposedly bad. He just acts like being married is this like universally known truth that like being married is the correct stage and if you're not married that's bad. People being married less is bad. But why? Why is it bad? Why is it supposedly so awful? He's completely ignoring the fact that even people who are married can be miserable while married, and even people who are single can be so happy while single. He's ignoring the fact that people cohabit and can be both miserable and happy in that state and so on. There's so many factors that he's just not taking into account. He's not explaining why he thinks things are supposedly good or bad. It's just ridiculous. I don't see how an increase in divorces is a bad thing if it means that people are happier in the long run and more productive members of society. Sorry, baby. I would rather have a higher divorce rate and less people in abusive or miserable marriages than a lower divorce rate and people having to stay with their abusers or cheating partners or just people that they don't share the same goals with. I've said this before, but the end of a relationship isn't necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't mean that the relationship was a failure, it just means that it's come to an end now. You might have had an amazing few years together and now it's ended and you move on and do amazing things separately. That's it. A divorce, a relationship ending, a breakup are not outright bad things and we need to stop thinking of them as such. And then he goes, but wait, there's more in his offensive capital letters. There's just not, no need for this many. This still says nothing about the tense psychological, emotional and political climate between men and women. Nearly every man today is accused of unconsciously being a sexist or misogynist, benefiting from the evil patriarchy that oppresses women daily. Yet most women don't even know what misogyny means. Don't believe me? Watch my podcast when women foolishly call me a misogynist for stating an objective fact and the subsequent entertainment of asking them to define it after their false accusation. It is hilarious! Spoiler alert, it's not hilarious. Don't watch the podcast. Myron, you are a misogynist. Undoubtedly, absolutely. And the only laughable thing here is you. How is this man so tragic and pathetic, hmm? How? And how are you so cute and wonderful? And smart and independent and my perfect little lady? Isn't she a baby? I love you, little flops. I love you. Gorgeous girl. <laughs> I need to go change the battery camera battery but I don't want to move because you're so cute. You're so, so cute. I know. And then he then goes on being all like women aren't really oppressed. Why? Because I say so. Again like there's a lot of crap that he says here that the series that I'm releasing at the moment is going to refute all these claims, the actual evidence to back it up. So please subscribe if you'd like to see that. There are specific things and stats and stuff like that that I could have mentioned in this video but I don't really want to have to repeat myself too much so I will just say please watch that video when it comes out because I'm really proud of all the work I'm putting into it and I think it's going to be good when it's done. Of course he brings up things like false rape claims, like it's some sort of pressing problem. It's not. Again we'll talk about this more in my video series but did you know that in the UK a man is 230 times more likely to be raped himself than be falsely accused of rape. The number of actual false allegations is so, so low. And as for the likelihood of a woman being assaulted versus making a false accusation, oh my god, the number is astronomical. It's ridiculous. I think men like Myron seem to think if there was no conviction then nothing happened and should first claim, but that is absolute crap and that's not the case at all. Because of men like Myron and the overall stigma around rape, and because, and you know he doesn't like this word, because of rape culture, because it is a thing and it has consequences, so many women are too afraid or ashamed to ever report their rapes or assaults at all. Not to mention the process of having to relive your trauma over and over and over while providing evidence is impossible for so many. It's difficult. I had to report my domestic violence incidents and I didn't even end up pressing charges because it was such a difficult process having to relive it all and I had amazing police on my side. 
they were wonderful, they were supportive, they fully believed me, I had evidence of messages and emails and all that sort of stuff there and like things that happened and even for me it was near impossible having to go through and repeatedly give statements and go over and over and over literally some of the most traumatic stuff I've been through. So I get why people don't report it and don't press charges because it's hard and even when they do report it and do press charges convictions are so hard to get because again no one really takes the crime seriously. It's always undermined and underplayed. There is so much victim blaming. It's hard to get hard evidence and a whole bunch of other reasons I don't have time to cover right now. But the point is, just because someone isn't convicted for a rape or assault, that doesn't make it a false accusation. Not by a long shot. So to give you one example, Myron claims that just like so many men are getting fired because all they did was ask a woman out. But this is absolute complete crap. This doesn't happen at all. Truth is, sexual assault and harassment is incredibly common in workplaces and the consequences for men who do it barely barely exist nothing it's really not taken seriously so to look at an example um YouGov did a poll in 2016 that found that for every woman who was sexually harassed or assaulted at work by a man less than two percent actually got any justice and saw any improvement in their situation less than 2%. The other 98.2% of people were either unable to make a report, didn't have their reports taken seriously, their abuser got away with it, or once they'd reported it, their abuser and colleagues went on to make their life worse after reporting the incident. It's ridiculous. And sources for all this stuff are in the video description and we're gonna be talking about it in more depth in the video series I'm doing. Now I feel like someone like Myron would look at these stats and say, see, only 2% of claims are real, the rest are false. But that's not how the world works, that's not true. And you're just downplaying actual assaults and harassment that people have been through, and it's not okay. You're part of the problem. I really hope that Myron himself and the men like him are never sexually assaulted or harassed or raped. Because if he knew what it was like to go through that and then not be believed and be and be blamed for what happened to you. It's just, no one deserves that. I don't think he understands that. Hilariously though, he says at the start of the next chapter, what we were missing was one simple ugly truth. And that ugly truth is that most women simply don't like most men that much and never really did. <laughs> one, that's not true. We like men, we just don't like you. And two, when you call us whores and just wanna use us and oppress us, and you write the way you have in this book about us and speak the way you have about us on your podcast, is it any wonder? As a woman, I love men. I love my friends who are men. I love my partner who's a man. I love going on dates. I love buying gifts for men. I love art and books and music created by men. I even love sex with men. Men, brilliant, love them, wonderful. I am lucky to be surrounded by so many incredible, amazing, smart, kind, inspiring men in my life. Every single day, I'm surrounded by these wonderful men. I love men, but I hate misogynists. I hate people like Myron here, who don't see me as a full, equal human being just because of my sex and gender. How is it so difficult for men like this to get their head around, well, actually, no, I know how, ego, he has a massive ego. It's the only thing that's big about him. They can't accept that the reality is we don't like you. We don't have a problem with men. We have a problem with you. That's it. The issue isn't our standards being too high. It's just the fact that you're not a very nice person. You're stupid and you're cruel and you're mean and you're insecure and you're too weak to work on any of that. So you just stick your fingers in your ear and go, eh, blah, 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 women's so bad. It's all women's fault and it's pathetic. He then goes on to make some absolutely ridiculous, hilarious arguments about how apparently women don't like sex because we watch less porn, which historically has been exploitative and degrading to women and made by men for men, so maybe that's something to do with it. Honestly, now that there's more porn created for women by women, stats are showing that this is starting to change and more women are watching it when it's ethically made and well done. He also says that women don't like sex because we say no to being, and I quote, bluntly propositioned. I have many things to say about this. Uh, one, the study that he's quoting is over 50 years old. That's very out of 
date. Two, you realise most women will turn down a stranger who just bluntly propositions them because chances are she's not going to end up having sex with them. She's either going to be killed, raped, kidnapped, trafficked, whatever. That doesn't mean we don't enjoy consensual sex because we don't want to risk being murdered. Um, and three, his citation for this seemed to be linking to the wrong web page if we're going by the URL. It was talking about something else, but when I clicked it anyway, nothing there. The web page no longer exists, so yeah. Quality research, mate. Good job. Good job. Look, Myron, just stop pretending women don't like sex and just admit that they don't like sex with you. There's no shame in not being able to please a woman. Well, there is if you're not aware of that being wrong with you and you're actually proud of it and you don't do anything to change and instead blame it on the women you can't please, so yeah. Shame on you, Myron. Shame. Shame. He then goes on to claim that because there aren't as many attractive men out there, that means women aren't actually interested in men. That's not how it works. Again, stop blaming women for your own flaws and lack of appeal. He then asks, when's the last time, if ever, a girl asked you out, took you to dinner, or initiated contact for any social, romantic, or sexual interaction? Well, as a woman, I can answer this on behalf of my partner. I was the one who asked him out and for his birthday I planned and paid for a whole day out for him where I took him to, it was actually a really nice day, we did a veggie cafe for lunch, we went to a little secondhand bookshop that he loved, we did a chocolate making workshop, went for cocktails, did a viking themed escape room and then I took him for dinner at a little like 20s jazz age themed restaurant with lots of veggie and vegan options and he loved it and I paid for the whole day because it was his birthday. It was a special day. So there you go. And as for social, romantic and social interactions, I'd say we're pretty much 50-50 there. Happens a lot. Because he's nice. Because that's what happens when you actually like a man. I can believe that women don't ask out Myron. I can believe that they don't want to do anything for him because it's him. It's not a gendered thing. It's just a you're a bad person thing. You know? Again, if you're complaining that women aren't treating you this way, maybe the problem is with you. Because women do do this for people. I'm not the exception. He then complains about women enjoying their career, traveling, having a life, because again, sad, insecure little child. And then he goes on trying to get people to watch his crappy podcast again. No, don't do it. If you are looking for something to fill your time, don't watch his podcast. Instead, here's a 10 hour stream of paint drying. I recommend it over Fresh and Fit much more entertaining. Then there's more moaning about how women would rather stay single than be with men like him and how women are being too picky. Oh no, how dare we be happy by ourselves. Oh no, how dare we know we deserve better than you. Oh no, how dare they not settle for your crap and soothe your bruised little ego. Oh no. Grow up. In perhaps one of the grossest bits of the book, he just starts uh, repeating himself again, saying, under this new contract, men and women interact voluntarily, nothing is exchanged. Women are to support themselves independently, requiring no support or subsidy from men, while they, in turn, are no longer needed to provide men with sex, love, support, or family. This book really could have been a tenth of the size it is, and it would still be bad. Men cannot do without sex. The male sex drive is the most powerful biological force in the world. <laughs> You blow yourself, don't you? Making sex more of a non-negotiable addiction. <laughs> Unfortunately, this puts women in an uncomfortable position. Most women don't want to have sex with most men, yet despite the new contract's implementation, men are still trying to negotiate sex out of women, much to women's tremendous and never-ending annoyance. Yeah, Marion, here's the thing, right? When you talk about men trying to force and negotiate sex with women who don't want it, that's not sex. That's rape. Luckily though for us, not all men are like Myron with his, oh, me big caveman, can't control her body, must rape. Thankfully, not all men are like that. Myron seems unable to grasp the fact that one, men can and do control themselves. Two, women also have sex drives. And three, women can and do control themselves. You're in the wrong here, Myron. Again. He then spends literally a whole chapter going on about how women are lazy. Not all of us though. If you actually support yourself like I do, then you're okay and this chapter isn't for you. You're fine, you're one of the good ones. Screw you, Myron. Stop trying to not like the other girls as it's not working. I'm not gonna sit here and let you crap on other women just because you tried to neg me for a second. Not okay, especially when you're in the wrong. Women aren't lazy, you're just wrong. All your stats that you quote, you are missing the context and misunderstanding them. So he quotes stats 
like, men overall work 52 minutes more each day than women. Women are twice as likely to work part-time compared to men. Women take leave from work more frequently than men and for more extended periods. Women also use 8% of their vacation days compared to 82% of men. Women call in sick 30% more frequently than men. But he completely misses the context of these statistics and his conclusions are wrong because of it. Again, not gonna go into too much detail because I cover all of this stuff in my ongoing video series, but women aren't doing this stuff because they're lazy. There are good reasons for this. For example, women are more likely to call in sick because one, we have issues with periods and all the kind of like pregnancy period health related stuff that honestly isn't taken seriously and we're not really getting treatment for it. Two, women are misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed or just completely dis dismissed by doctors at a much higher rate than men, which means our illnesses aren't treated as quickly and tend to be longer ongoing problems that we have to repeatedly take time off for and keep going back to healthcare professionals to try and fix. For example, it takes women with endometriosis on average 10 years to be diagnosed. From them first going to the doctor to complain about it to getting a diagnosis 10 years because it's not taken seriously. Another example, women with heart conditions are much less likely to be diagnosed with men. Take heart attacks as just one example. Women are 50% more likely to be misdiagnosed after a heart attack than men, meaning after heart attacks, women are more likely to die than men. Top of this, you also have to take into account pregnancy related issues and all sorts of stuff. It's not laziness, it's a bias against women in the healthcare system. On top of all that, consider the fact that perhaps women work less hours per day at work because we have to carry out 2.5 times more under paid work than men. On average, men carry out between 30 and two hours of household chores a day. For women, it's between three and six hours a day. That means men might do 52 minutes more work, but women are doing between two and a half and five and a half hours more unpaid household work than men are. It's not laziness, we have other priorities. Consider as well women with kids. Women tend to do most of the child rearing. 90% of single parent households in countries like America are led by women. Women have to take time off to look after the kids, especially because there's so little help out there with childcare. It's no surprise women have to leave work earlier or have to resort to only part-time work because they have these extra burdens on them. Laziness has nothing to do with it, quite the opposite in fact. Women work hard and often it's just not acknowledged. Once again, Myron hasn't bothered to do any real deep research and it shows. Then, like the selfish douchebag he is, he spends a while complaining about having to pay taxes. Mate, your privilege is showing and it's ugly, put it away. In perhaps the most hypocritical part of this book, he quotes some other guy saying, most women wanna get married and have children. Very few want to be wives and mothers. Most women in the West don't view a husband and kids as the human beings in life that will give them ultimate purpose, meaning love and reason to exist. Instead, most women view husbands and children as things to have, boxes to check, status symbols to display. Mate, this is literally you. Men like you don't want to be equal partners. Men like you don't want to parent kids. You don't want to actually put the work in. You just want some slave that you can have around the house and have sex with who will pop out babies for you so you can use them as a status symbol. That's it. Then he's all like, okay, so here's what we do to show women. Are you ready? This will show them. You never give preferential hiring treatment to a girl over a guy because you want to fuck her. Like that's some sort of revelation. No, that's not teaching us a lesson. That's what we want. If you do this, if you hire someone because you want to sleep with them, that's sexual harassment. Don't sleep with your employees. Don't hire people just to sleep with them. That's rapey as hell. You're not teaching us a lesson by doing this, you're finally giving us what we've been asking for. <laughs> he also says, and you never do a girl's homework, auto repairs, carpentry, or computer repairs uncompensated financially. Please, have you seen how poorly designed this man's website is? I wouldn't ask him for help with a computer if he paid me. <laughs> but seriously, good, we can do that stuff ourselves. So can most people. I hate how everything is like transactional with this guy. And while we're here saying like, that's fine. We wanna be able to do this stuff for ourselves, that's okay. And he's like, well, I'll show you, I'm not gonna do it. And we're like, good, please don't, stay away from us. And then he ends this weird rant with the simple statement of women deserve less, to which I just have to say, no you. Apparently his goal is to prevent you from wasting your resources on the unreciprocated romantic and sexual pursuit of women to the point it ruins your life. But your goal shouldn't be to trade things for sex anyway. That's creepy and predatory as hell. Myron's out here thinking that this big revelation is, see, stop wasting time on ungrateful women. That'll show them when in reality, what his proposed actions here are actually saying is, we need to stop being predatory in our actions. And all these women are here listening to that thinking, thank God, will you finally leave me alone now? Of course in this chapter, he uses absolute 
ridiculous phrases like you're wasting your time by being a girl's emotional tampon as she friend zones you and complains about her abusive boyfriend. I would call this just being a decent friend and human and trying to save someone from an abuser but that's just me. Seriously, if you think we should just let women sit by and be abused unless she agrees to sleep with you, then you're part of the problem. Then there's just pages and pages of him repeating the same old boring crap we've seen throughout the rest of the book and from children like him before. And um, oh, I do appreciate how poorly this bit aged though, right? Just look at all the hate Andrew Tate got. This Tate hate didn't hurt Andrew, but it did hurt all the right people who hated seeing a strong, good-looking, successful man enjoying his life, living how he wanted to, and not giving a single fuck what they thought otherwise. <laughs> ah! Yeah, Mr. Losing his hair with no chin while he's sat alone in a prison cell being the biggest joke in the world. He's not hurt at all, is he? And then he moans for a while about being a top 5% man and how most women are just like fives or sixes, so how dare they have standards? I find this whole rating system completely stupid. It's ridiculous. It completely ignores the fact that attraction is completely subjective, you know? For example, Myron clearly rates himself a 10 out of 10, but as a woman, I would rate him down in the negative numbers because I'm actually attracted to real men with nice beards and non-repulsive personalities. That being said, I'm sure there are some women out there who would be attracted to Myron. For example, if they're blind and deaf and have a thing for soft little hands because he's never done a real day's work in his life. And then he ends the book in the last chapter by listing a bunch of idiots as resources. People like Roosh V and Rolla Tomasi and all that crap. Um, it's a useful list if you're looking for people to avoid. And yeah, that's the end of this absolutely terrible book. Reading that was half an hour of my life I'm never gonna get back, but what are you gonna do? Honestly, I have no patience for this stuff anymore. It is just completely ridiculous. And after how much like draining work I've been putting into videos behind the scenes at the minute. I just wanted to kind of let off a bit of steam today and mock an idiot. And honestly, I can't think of anyone more deserving <laughs> except maybe Andrew Tate. Um, thank you for watching today. Please let me know what you think of this sad little man child down in the comments. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this incredibly, incredibly snarky and probably a little bit meaner than normal, but I'm not sorry for once video. I'm just, no. I'm done with men like this. I have no time for them. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Oh, as it's getting nearly uh, to the end of the month as well, um, you only have a little bit of time left to get your uh, Kyra postcards if you want them. I haven't really announced this in a video yet, but it's it's quite exciting. Um, after the Jordan Peterson poetry video, which is so bad, um, I decided to make this silly little postcard design um, featuring Kyra. And um, it's in the style of Jordan's book and kind of mocking and parodying that whole whole design aesthetic bad poetry thing but it's kind of cute we're making these we're selling them for like four quid each I think it is um I try to keep the postage as low as possible as well and I'm gonna hand sign all of them with like a unique message to all of you on the back Kyra's gonna paw print them all for you as well which is gonna be really really cute so if you'd like to get one they're gonna be available until the end of the month so that's gonna be um until the 31st of March and I'm gonna be ordering and signing and sending out in bulk so um if you'd like to get one of those you can grab them off my website now um, otherwise, thank you for watching today. I appreciate you guys a lot. Uh, you can always support my work by sharing around this video on social media, leaving a like, leaving a comment, subscribing to my channel. I've got Patreon if you want to help me out at all over there. It's always really very much appreciated and thank you. Um, but for now, yeah, I'm gonna shut up and go. <laughs> Let's go eat some chocolate, I think. <laughs> I need it after this. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you so much and goodbye.